fortune cookie. You know what my fortune said? Tell me. What fortune was your number said. first? First tell me the number. It was no number. Is there supposed to be a number? Should I be looking for a number? There's a lucky numbers are on the back. I never look at the back. Okay. So what did it say? My lucky number is one. That is the number of people I can count on in life. Me. And only me. Wow. Tough work call? No. No. It's just, you know, it takes a while to get to that realization in, in life. But once you get there, it is liberating. Did you shroom today? I've never shroomed in my life unless you count, like, having, like, grilled mushrooms on a burger. Or, Welcome like, back to Lucas Tigers side. and Bronze. Oh, my. Luca Nation, today is the second part of the Did you NFL zoom today? season. I wish. NFL season preview. Why? Why do you wish? Isn't the world stimulating enough for you without herbal enhancement? Dude, I, like, I, I, didn't, I haven't done it in like a year and a half. Aren't there enough? Since the Marvel break, brother. <laughs> Which, by the way, was the greatest. He, I was wondering why he liked Marvel so much. He's like, I literally oh, fell in love with Marvel. Marvel cards. <laughs> They're so great. <laughs> Just to be clear, it was like on the tail end. Like when I had the like the sunset. It was on the beat. Dude, it's, it's, it's one. Of, I think it's the best drug. I really do. I think it's. Uh, I I don't know how to explain it, man. I think I, people out there who who've done it, like you know, like they say, like Aaron Rodgers did ayahuasca, but like he goes on shows and tries to explain. It's one of those things that like you can't explain. You have to experience some things. You can't do. You can't put into words. Um. So like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I mean, it's good stuff, man. I'll tell you guys before we get into the show, NFL show today. Cage did an overview of the AFC yesterday. Mm -hmm. We'll stay on that for a minute, but be on the lookout, guys. We've uh, we've promised you guys a channel full of content since day one. Yeah. A channel that you guys will never have to pay for content. And the hope and the intention of our channel is to provide anecdotes, guests, and experiences that could help you guys along the journey of card collecting. It's really that simple. Uh, you guys out there that have been with us since day one or joined along the the, the path, you guys know, like, kind of what we're about, what we're trying to do here. We're never here to tell you what to buy. We just want to, like, the, the funny anecdote we play out, we want to lead a horse to water, you know? Right. Or lead a fish. Or lead water. a fish to water. But, like, <laughs> you guys know from the bottom of our heart, I've made a lot of mistakes collecting. I've made a lot of mistakes with money. I share my journey wide out, wide on the wide in the open. So that it could benefit you guys. And same with Cage. So be on the lookout. We have a really, really awesome announcement coming in the coming days. Now. Let's hope I can get it across the finish line now that you're, now that you're teasing it. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's I, hope there's no snags. I could change announcements all the time. I have, I have no <laughs> like shortage, no shortage of, of paper company names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got him to laugh. Gotta love it. Yeah, it's fun stuff. No, man, listen. If I'm I was excited. an office character, which office yeah. character do you think Kevin. I would be? What about you? Kevin. Are you Oscar? It's the only, it's the only office character that matters. Kevin is – you're a Kevin. The best. Kevin's the best. I'm Kevin. Kevin is not the best. Kevin's the best. I mean, listen, who am I? I have – what's funny about the office is I've Phyllis. worked in offices with all characters like that. Like we all know people in offices like that. And what's amazing is I think that if you're being honest, they are all caricatures of personality traits that everyone has. Like we all have a little Oscar. You said I'm Oscar. We all have a little Kevin. We all have a little Oscar. We all have a little, you know, Angela. We all have a little <laughs> Jim. We all have a little Dwight. You know, I mean, we all have we all have a bunch of all those. A little I Michael Scott. I noticed. You know? that, do we have Michael Scott? Yeah, we have all of. That. I mean, that, that, that's what makes it great. Because at any given day, I, I to, you you might be somebody's Michael Scott. To them, you know, you know, they play the gym role. To you, they play the Dwight role. I mean, what was so cool for me was that you know, like back to the thing that we always say, like imagine what you could accomplish if you don't worry about who takes the credit. Mm -hmm. yep. They all played their roles so well. Like yeah. I think if you ask, like I think Michael, I, I think Steve Carell carried that on his back, but they all added just enough and not too much to make that show perfect. You know, it took me a long time to appreciate and even watch The American Office because I'm one of those snobs. You watched uh, the British one first? I watched the British one first. Really? Yes, recommend? I watched the British one. 
it, you will be amazed. What I would tell you to do is watch the first season of The Office, the American Office, and then watch the first and basically only season of the British Office. And what you'll notice is we have an echo, but it's gone now. What, what, what you'll notice is it's exactly the same show, same same characters, same same storylines, like the same episodes. So like what the American version did was they took it and just redid it. They changed some names. Like there was a Jim. There was Jim and Pam, right? Um, the difference is... Um, Do you understand the humor, though? Like, you know, sometimes regional humor is like the, the actual jokes. It's almost the same. It's a paper company. I mean, it's almost the same thing, you know? I mean, I think they're in Slough instead of um, instead of Slough. I think they're in Slough instead of... Uh, um, Guys, you know, where, have you where's caught the on to what the where, announcement where, 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 is? We are no longer in sports. We're a paper company. We are now movie and TV show critics. Well, that's the, that's the announcement. Get it across no, I'm the finish line. Surprise! Ne- this is the Netflix show that Dwight uh, was named Gareth, which doesn't really carry over. Gareth is not a very American name, but it's the same type of, you know, the same type of thing. Um, and Ricky Gervais, it was his show. He was the Michael Scott character, you know, and he actually shows up later on in the Office. Yes, right? he does. You know, he does. Same. He does. So. Um, yeah, anyway, I was a little surprised about the lack of creativity in the first season. I watched it. I'm like, I've already seen this, but just with bad British accents. So it took me a while to, you know, to come around to, to the office. Um, and then it got stupid when they had all these you know, guests, Will Ferrell and James yeah. Spader. And it just kind of just dumb. They just try to keep it going. So okay, a few things. Congrats mm-hmm. to Francis Tiafo. Yes. American into the semis. Just beat Rublev. Yeah, it's been a while. Who's the last? We had an American in the semis recently. Uh, n- nobody, but we haven't had an American in the semis since what? Andy Roddick, maybe? I think it might have been Andy Roddick. Andy Roddick's definitely the last American to win. I think he won the Open in like 03. That's um, a long time ago. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely been a while. Alcaraz has never made a semi. He will. Well, he, he has got to win today. Yeah, he's 18 years old. He doesn't win today. Win. He's 19. He's 19. Uh, yes. His cards are selling pretty well. Oh. What's interesting is with releases like that, there's a, there's not a lot of auction sales. There's a lot of best golfers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Um, I could get into that hole. Dude, the more I bid, man, I got to tell you, eBay is a very interesting place. Very interesting world in that. that it's a whole atmosphere. First off, why do they cap how many things you could watch? Right? Like your watch list. Like yes. Call them to be like, hey, can I watch more items? Uh, it makes absolutely. Or just sense. you can you can go into the, your watched items, and you can un. So here's a little. I don't know, it's a trick, but that watch list, the max you have, it counts items you watched that ended. You yes, have to go yeah. and unwatch those. You have to go into your completed and unwatch those. Why do you need to watch those? Well, I, I understand. I just why do they add that step of friction? That could be bidding mm-hmm. while they're doing that. So c- congratulations to PWCC. 175 mil f- funding. Mm-hmm. We always do like little like golf claps for funding rounds. So congratulations. All right, them. 175 million. You have PWCC. What's the first thing you do with it? Do you buy Eddie from Investor Card? Do you just buy CardFi? I got to you... tell you, bro, I don't think CardFi is a business yet. Like, I think he's self employed. We've talked <laughs> about this before. So you don't buy Eddie. Well, I don't know. Th- these are my lessons as I'm going through business. So I share with you because I was like, Guys, it's funny. Like I, I went down this journey, this entrepreneurial journey, like maybe seven years ago. And I, you know, you jump from working for somebody and you think you're an entrepreneur. You put that. What'd you do? You sold mouthwash. What, what, <laughs> you what, was, what was? What was? Your I'm not good enough to jersey. sell products. I sold websites. Oh, but nice. I, I, I've been. Cage went on vacation, so I, I used that week to kind of like put my head down and learn. And I was like, dude, I skipped the step of being self-employed. Like first, you just buy yourself a job. You basically make the same amount of money, but work a hundred hours a week and turning an idea, turning a job into a business. That's a different game. PWCC is on a whole different level of what a business is. You know, we talk about putting a, a, a we, you, every business wants like a forward facing uh, face. Where's Brent? But that business can run without Brent. That's what people really want to invest in. It's a system. It's a model that you can plug and play different people into so what they've done there, man, is vaulting, weekly auctions. Uh, there's coming an announcement that they're going to do that's really, really sick with your guys' raw cards. There's Premier. Uh, and now financing, I mean, 
the value offering to customers. You know about the art um, vault in Geneva called Freeport? We talked about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Where people send their stuff, they could like buy their stuff, they send it there, it's tax free. So they, mm-hmm. they do some of the benefits of that. And they get their art reappraised and actually like they can flip it, they can keep it, they can take collateral out of it. Sounds familiar. That's what PWCC will be. And f- do you know how much assets under management Freeport has? In the billions, billions. That's how much in art they 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 store. So, like, just to put it in perspective, if I were to guess, I would say probably 200 million. Is how much PWCC has. Oh, I think you're. I think you're shy. You think, I think more? I think you're low. Wow. I, I, just. I think you're way low. You more than two hundred mil? Mm, definitely, and and assets under under vault, definitely. Oh, fine, amazing, but but I think you're the way model. short. It's irrelevant. The number. The point is that's the model: vaulting, appraisals. Being able to auction things off, you have the premiere, and now being able to finance stuff. I mean, I, th- I think it's well done. I-, I love watching businesses improve. All right. I mean, 175 million. I mean, how much of it's coming my way is what I want to know. Guys, you know, a little check. I'll use it in the weekly auction. Just just send me some, send me some, send me some money, and it's good. And I mean, if Ken Golden wants to send me some money too. You can. Heritage. You guys know where to find me. I got a P.O. box. Just send me some money. You're a one percenter, dude. No one's gonna send you money. <laughs> it's the, gov- the government's not sending me money. They're taking Stop it. Lying. I'll tell you that much. So you want to talk football? We got to finish our our uh, yeah. our episode. We got to do NFC or anything else that's kind of sticking out, you know, in your brain and uh, you know, in in the in the card and content world. Um, I'm excited because although it's not a quote unquote licensed product, I think it's like a multi sport product, a product that I wanted. Basically, a year ago, it's like a multi-sport metal product that, you know, my 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 LCS had the sell sheet on. And I'm like, yeah, I want that because I saw they had like Jambalaya and PMGs and there's footballs like Trevor Lawrence cards. And it's like it's multi-sport kind of thing. It is, you know, it's it's an upper deck metal, clear metal. It's a metal metal product. Not pro it's, uniforms though, right, though? No, no. It's the college. I've seen like the Bill Russell Jambalaya from 2014. Yeah, this is – I mean, I think it may even come in as a 2021 metal product even though it's cool. releasing close to 2022, 2023. Um, so you got an update on it? Yeah, it's supposed to come out next week. Are you pumped? Yeah, I hope I, I hope I can get a box. Um, you know, I hope I can get some, you know. I mean, this is – I hope you can get some too. It's funny because – well, you want to be dirty and talk about magic mushrooms. But I, what I mean on this is, you know, this was one of those things where – um, it probably was only a couple hundred bucks if it came out when it was supposed to come out. It's called uh, Skybox Metal Universe Champions, which you know you've, you've seen these, about right? This, yes. And I talked yes. about it because it has it has a bunch of stuff. I mean, it, I think it releases in a week, and the boxes are you know they're over a thousand bucks in pre sales. It's just it's insane. I guess people want it, right? And and what's hotter than like Jambalaya? Intimidation Nation is in it. You know, that's a cool card. You've seen those. Like, there's a Jordan Intimidation. It's his face, and it says Intimidation I have a Nation theory. On it. I have a Blast theory. Furnace. You know, there's. I have a, a Griffey Blast Furnace. Tell me, if I'm, tell me if I'm crazy, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, what, guys, we promise we'll get into the NFC preview. Yeah. So, you fly into Cancun Airport. You can't call an Uber. When you go outside, there's people yelling at you, taxi, 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 taxi. Any one of the taxis you go up to, the, the guys, they all have this sell sheet. And all of their prices are identical. Mm -hmm. And they call themselves the taxi mafia, the taxi cartel. Do you think that there's a breaker's cartel that raises the floor price on any box that's worth any demand? And they basically buy all of them up, reset the whole price, and they'll sell below. And now they could break. They could set market rates for a box that they're into for $250 when – they own, let's say, 40, 50, 60, 70% of all the supply out there. They could corner the market. I mean, no, I, I mean, I, I don't think there is that because anybody can get this, I think, and anybody can sell it. But yeah, I mean, the prices are crazy compared to what I think people are being charged. But on the flip side, you know, what made this interesting to me when it came out is I'm sure what makes it interesting to everybody else, right? 
When was the last time you were able to open a product and chase a Jordan PMG green? I've never chased Jordan. I would have caught him. <laughs> well, you're definitely on one of them today. I am going to mute and let you do the NFC preview. Wait, why? Who did you talk to before when we talked at 3.30 and now? I, I am sober. I've just been watching tennis, drinking coffee, and reading business. I am I am not on anything. What are you what are you saying here? You've never chased Jordan. You would have caught him. Well, that was just a joke. Like, oh, come in <laughs> You're such a weirdo. All right, guys, the NFC East. Let's start it off there, right? We talked about this one. I made a post yesterday. We it's been a day in the making now to talk about the NFC East. I believe that this is a close division. It's obviously a two-horse race between the Eagles and the Cowboys, but I think it's the Eagles' division to win. Take a look, guys, um, You know, from a card perspective. I was trying to tell Andrew a little bit about this yesterday. I'm not a believer in Jalen Hurts long-term. I'm not a believer in Jalen Hurts as a fantastic quarterback. I don't think he's going to set records. I don't think he's really you know, in the GOAT conversation. Um, I think if he was in the AFC, he might not even be in the top half of quarterbacks in the AFC currently. But if you look at his schedule... In the first nine games, there are three games that they could lose. I'm going to say they lose two out of three of those games, which puts them at seven and two. Right? The Lions, schedule. Vikings, Commanders, Jags, Cardinals, Cowboys. And they play the Commanders again and in week Canada. nine. I mean, I think those are all wins. Then there's three that I think maybe they can win one of, which puts them at six and three, seven and two after nine. Whereas the Cowboys, if you look at it, they have a very difficult out-of-the-division schedule. I think they're going to lose to the Eagles. Um, but also, they have, like, the Bucks, the Rams, the Pack, like, playoff teams. I, I think it's either five or six of their first nine games are against teams that made the playoffs last year. It's very difficult start to the season. Now, the Eagles' second half is a little tougher. But in Week 9, you could have a 7-2 and two Eagles and a 4-5 and five Cowboys. And Can the I give you a little yeah, angle and tell me what you think this is? A revenge angle on football. So last year, the Eagles played the Lions, and they mm -hmm. dismantled the Lions 44-6. to six. Mm -hmm. If you guys remember, Lions last year were competitive but bad. I'll yeah. put them in that. I like, and a lot of people that I respect when it comes to football, like this Lions team to overperform. Who's the quarterback? The, just, just real quick, say that. Lions play the Eagles week one. Revenge mm -hmm. game? Matter? No, Lions, no, no, no. Everybody, be, everybody beat the Lions last year. The Lions okay. need to take revenge on everyone. They went like 0-112. Oh, the Lions should be taking revenge for the last 20 years. They haven't had a winning record since you know, Barry Sanders was there. Crazy. Dude, who's the Lions revenge quarterback? for the Lions, Cage. Yeah. And I'm bringing out the hat. You bring out the banana hat. And I'm bringing out the hat. No, no banana hat. We, don't get, we didn't get paid. Who cares? We're not. And the banana hat, I think the Lions beat the Eagles this weekend. Oh, my God. Banana play of the week, guys. Jeez. What's the spread? Who's the Lions quarterback? Give me the analysis. It's got to be Goff, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're, all, we're all counting on him. All right. Listen, we got it. We, you know, we have, we have the, the predictions for, uh, you know, Eagles-Lions season opener. A lot of people are going to be there in Detroit. You know, people are flocking to the stadium. They're going to have a lot of folks there. Um, Sarcasm? No, it's actually a sold-out game. Well, of course. The Lions it's don't. No. It's a standing-room-only game at the Lions. They haven't had one of those since 2019. doesn't matter that it's football. It's still the Lions football. Yeah, that, that's the first time that they have standing-room-only since 2019. I thought NFL had a rule that it's blackout if it's not sold out. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, you. Research it. I read a headline. That the Lions game, this will be this will be the, the biggest crowd they've had in three years. They haven't had a standing room only crowd since 2019. I'll send you an article. I'll send you I'll revenge send you game, article. revenge game, <laughs> revenge, revenge game. game. I'm telling you, I yeah, know my people. I mean, you know, you could uh, you could be wrong, but then I'm, again, you, you could also wrong. you could also again be wrong. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Fox Sports Lions home opener versus Eagles on Sunday is sold out. Only standing room tickets are available. It's the first time since 2019 that a game has had standing room only and the first time the Lions have offered standing room tickets in a non-Thanksgiving game since 2017. 
That's what the Eagles do. They bring a crowd. We bring a crowd. Cage. <laughs> you would do I anything to, to go before. against Philly. You just don't like Philly. What is it? A shithole? <laughs> Recall. Is that um, what <laughs> before we move on to the AFC, uh, yeah. NFC preview, mm-hmm. my biggest takeaway, it wasn't about Josh Allen yesterday or um, Herbert or Holmes. The biggest value that I took was this Denver Broncos team and Russ Wilson might be a buy. Maybe take a look at Russell Wilson cards. That was my biggest takeaway. You, you had the Broncos going to the Super Bowl. Russ is a, as accomplished quarterback. I mean, as a hot take, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, I think Russ is undervalued. Okay, I think he's gonna have a great year this year. Oh, with a new team, he's on the big contract. I think he's there for quite some time. He's just gonna pay out his numbers, and I think he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. I do. Um, so yeah, I think his cards are are under undervalued. Um. Before we leave the NFC East, just a tale of – I don't want to call it a tale of woe, but just a, a cautionary tale, all right? Everybody is heavily invested in quarterbacks coming into this season, all right? And it's just it, – it is what people have done. No one has seen a real bloodletting yet because we haven't had the type of monetary investment into quarterbacks that we had. I'm going to throw a question out there for you, right? And you can tell me, you know – If you know the answer, you don't know the answer, you name it. But the quarterback draft that we had, right, Um, what was it, the 2021 draft. Do you remember Trevor Lawrence was drafted first, right? And then it was, was, um, I think Zach Wilson was the second one. And I don't even remember who the hell you are. I'll I'll read it to you. I got you. You remember what it was, right? So I think Lawrence was first. Zach Wilson was second. Trey Lance was third. Justin right. Fields was 11th. Mac Jones was 15th. So we have a lot of money in Mac Jones. We have a lot of money in those quarterbacks. Before we leave the NFC East, maybe you know where I'm going with this. Before we leave the NFC East, do you remember what pick Daniel Jones was? Probably towards the end of the first. He was a Duke guy, right? He was a Duke guy. But I'm pretty sure the Giants moved up and drafted him with the number six overall pick. All right. Now, that doesn't mean that that you know he's more hype or more talent or whatever it is than somebody like Mac Jones or Justin Fields or Davis Mills who was drafted after all those guys I just named but where you play what division you're in you know what weapons you have around you it all factors in it's not only just about what you um, you know what kind of talent level you have individually and then there might not even be that much talent there I don't hear a single person saying that they are stocking up on Daniel Jones cards. Right. And he was the quarterback draft the year before these guys. So I know I've been saying this. I'm the pessimist. I'm the Vegas Dave. Burn it all down. Cards are going to fall on its face, right? I, I know. But next year when we do this, we're going to be talking about one, two, or maybe three of these young quarterbacks in the same way we're talking about Daniel Jones now. The one that I fear the most, believe it or not, is Mac Jones. Because while he's an Alabama quarterback and while he looks good and while there's a lot of Brady comparisons, I don't think the Patriots do anything this year. And I just – he doesn't really have the arm strength. Like I, I just – I don't understand the prices being paid for Mac Jones. But I, I hammered on Mac Jones yesterday. The one that really concerns me is Trevor Lawrence. I mean, the Jags are still the Jags, Right. And it's another year where he's basically going to be out there doing it himself, potentially get hurt. There's going to be a lot of picks, just like he had last year. He's probably not going to throw for a ton of touchdowns. He doesn't have the greatest, you know, um, skill people around him. And what's crazy is it used to be, all right, you could wait for somebody. You could wait a year, wait two years, wait three years, let him develop, right? I mean, you know, Josh Allen – a little better each year, and you know, he, all of a sudden they gave him a couple years, right? Josh Allen's cards were nothing in the beginning, right? I yeah. remember in 2020, I was paying nothing for his PSA 10 Prism Rookie Parallels, yeah. right? So we're in a very different spot now. The timeline is very crunched now, and because of what people are paying for Trevor Lawrence, they're paying Trevor Lawrence cards what they're paying for Josh Allen after three years of progress. You know what I mean? Not a fourth year, right? But, but we're getting close. So 
I guess if there's one thing I'll just continue to harp on, you guys probably hate it because everybody out there who has money in these young quarterbacks is like, shut up, Cage. These guys are all going to go out there and light it all up. That doesn't <laughs> happen. You know, they can't all light it up. You know, it's just not the way it works. Do you get those DMs? Is that I do, I do, I do. Yesterday, you know, people did not like that I went after Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes. There's a lot of money invested in Patrick Mahomes. They got a lot of those. Like, whoa, why do you think their defense isn't good? Their defense is so much better than you think that they're a retooled team. Like, I definitely get a lot. Of, and you know, I mean, well, do 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 the people that are on the other end listening realize the nuance of going after a player versus going after a player's card market? No. And remember how long and how much I had to beat my head in for you to get that that nuance also when it came to Giannis? I don't believe that you fully recovered, actually. I don't. I haven't. From, I haven't. from I haven't. traumatic brain injury. I don't so, think he's been right. But he hits that mute button way too often as a little crime and punishment. By, uh, so, <laughs> it actually <laughs> – Anyway, I guess the I'm point going is on I'm trying to find – like Kyler Murray, I talked about him as a potential buy low, but why is he buy low? He's by low because he was so damn high. Everybody expected, not high like you with the mushrooms, just high in the prices, right? It, it was so damn high that, that he had to be perfect, and he wasn't perfect. Guys, right? if you're with me, if you're on Team Goldberg, put a little <laughs> little mushroom emoji underneath. If you're on Team Cage, put that yeah. salsa yeah. dancer emoji. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're, on, if you're on Team, you know, uh, alternate reality, Please put a mushroom in with with Andrew. Yeah. If you like alter, if you if you can't deal with your own actual reality and you want to eat a fungus to improve reality and see things that are not there. Hey, I found some bargains in a PWCC. Are you on mushrooms again? No, I really <laughs> found I really found some bargains. <laughs> Maybe you miss things that are there. I mean, that's definitely true. We and the time you called day. me from Area Fifty One. You know, yeah, it was. I definitely I missed. There are things. There are things out there that I do not see. You are correct about this. We've only got through one division, and we're a half hour in, guys. I don't want to be the buzzkill. I hope everybody, every single quarterback, goes out there this year and has fifty touchdowns with no interceptions, <laughs> so that you all can make a lot of money. There, every quarterback. This is, is unbelievable. There has not been an interception thrown in the NFL no all season, and even more unbelievable, they're throwing five touchdowns a game. Only Carson Wentz and Jared Goff can throw interceptions, but nobody else is going to throw a single interception. It's fine. Every one of these young quarterbacks that's that's one, two, three, or four years in, Patrick Holmes is gonna have 112 touchdowns and no interceptions. Um, <laughs> NFC East junk division, worse than NFC the league. East. You know, it's it's yes. I think the Cowboys are decent, right? They have a difficult schedule. I think that if they're four and five, which is what I think they're gonna be after nine games, you might start to hear the Mike McCarthy firing rumblings. Because that's it wouldn't happen anywhere else, but it happened in Dallas. It happened with Jerry Jones, and it probably shouldn't happen because it's not really his fault. That organization should never have signed Ezekiel Elliott to the deal that he was signed to. It hamstrung the entire organization. You can't do those kind of contracts. It didn't allow them to hang on to their wide receivers. It's why Amari Cooper walked. It's it's why they aren't able to really bolster up that that uh, you know that 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 team. So anyway, it is what it is. Parsons back is a beast. By committee is the new move. Right? Yeah. Like- Running back, well, two, three, not running only back. by committee. Like I would have both of those running backs on the field at the same time. I told you I would use Pollard in the slot. I would use him to receive while I had Elliott in the backfield. No BS. I would use him as a slot back. That's what you do. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Cage, I'm a casual. Um, I, give, so, I've, I haven't watched any game tape on the NFL at all. Like I'm, and I've gotten more, way more niche. So we'll do our NBA preview. All right, let's move NFC East. All right, NFC North. This is a division that has, I think, two playoff teams in it. The Vikings, I believe, make the playoffs. And the Packers are... The Packers, I think... Rodgers after... What's amazing is... I mean, Aaron Rodgers does more with less. He reminds me of Brett Favre, who didn't really... You know, who was able to make receivers. He reminds me of of Brady when he didn't have Moss. And he just makes people players. I I mentioned this with Rodgers. I think I mentioned it with Mahomes. Rodgers even less, because he didn't even have a tight end. He has no one there. He's not going to have a, a, a wide receiver one or two in fantasy. I don't think he's going to have a top 24 wide receiver, but I think he's just going to light the place on fire. I, I, I watched interviews with Matt LaFleur saying that they're just going to let Rodgers gunsling. They're just going to let him go out there and just throw it to whoever it is that's lining up out there. He's pissed. As pissed off as – I mean, what did he win the last two MVPs? 
Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like, like back to back MVP coming in with a chip on his shoulder. Right. Um, you know, they are, um, I mean, it's amazing, right? So they have a wide receiver. He's got that Nicholas Cage gone in sixty seconds vibe to him too. Well, didn't he show up dressed like Nicholas Cage in The Rock? I think was what it Isn't was right? with the with the white the like the beater. Anyway, they drafted. Here's a nice little fun play for money. You can you can check the Vegas odds on this one. This we started off the episode with magic mushrooms, and a half an hour in, we're hitting the dubs. Smoke the dubs with me. Romeo yeah. Dubs, D O U B S. I may be saying that wrong, folks, but it Romeo, goes. Romeo, du- Romeo Dubies, Dubies, the Dubies. He's smoking the Dubs. I think Mr. Dubs wins the Offensive Rookie of the Year. All right, this is this is no one's no one's on. Everybody's on Chris Olave. Everybody's on the higher guys, but someone has to catch the passes from Aaron Rodgers, right? And it seems like we always have a thousand yard wide receiving rookie, whether it's Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, we can go back. This guy is that guy. I think Romeo Dubes is Doobie. going to step up the doobie. Doobie like doobie do. And I, like I don't this. know, I don't know what the Vegas odds are, right? But you know, the only concern on him coming into the draft was that he had some drops. But that exact same concern was what you heard about Jamar Chase coming into the draft. And he bo- they both had dropped in the preseason. Chase turned in a heck of Plus a year, 800. right? Plus 800. He's, he's 14 to 1 right now. There are four Ooh. players, four players with better odds. Good, good, good. Doobies. Four players. Romeo Dubes. I'm telling you. So that's it. The Vikings, I think, make the playoffs. I don't think they're that good. We have Luka Nation is filled with Kirk Cousin lovers. People no love Kirk Cousins. Don't put that I mean, evil on us. Don't put that evil on us, Cage. I mean, if I didn't know better, I would think our entire audience was from Arkansas because they all love their cousins. So here we go. We're moving forward. To... <laughs> oh, oh. I, 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 I actually took offense for a second there. I was offended, <laughs> and then I understood the joke. Oh, um, my dad yeah. used to tell that joke. He used to say um, that they passed a new law in Arkansas that when – Husband and wife get divorced. They're still cousins. <laughs> Legally. It's pretty terrible. I don't know why I make it fun, but cousins, it popped in my brain. NFC South. You're allowed. You ready? I'm, I'm probably not allowed. This is a cancel episode, I'm sure. I apologize to anyone listening in Arkansas. Yes, or anyone <laughs> married to their cousin. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Which, you know, used to be a thing, I guess. It is what it is. NFC South. I still have the Buccaneers holding them off on this. I really do. Um, you want a bold prediction? Bold prediction here. Bolder than Brady's plastic surgery? Yeah, he looks weird. But this is the season of chips on shoulders. Roger's going to go out there and have a great year. You made a prediction last year about touchdowns. I think Tom Brady goes out there and sets the single season record for most passing yards. I think this is his last year. I think they're just going to throw, throw, throw. One of the best plays we made la- uh, last season was the over on catches for Gronk, the game where he needed seven catches for a million-dollar bonus, and the over-under was six and a half. And I'm like, you know he's getting seven. And I've seen after the game, we've, I've seen clips of him going over to Brady saying, I need one more catch to get my Millie. And Brady throws him the ball. And then he's celebrating on the sidelines. I got my Millie. We're going. We're going. I mean, like, it, like, yeah, you have to know it's. I don't know whether or not Brady and the Bucks have enough in the tank, enough weapons, enough. I mean, they're a little dysfunctional here. He was away from camp for a while. He's got stuff going on to win a Super Bowl. But because Brady, as great as he is, can't control that himself. That is a team thing. But what he can control is when he goes into the quarterback meetings, goes to me, he says, I'm just throwing the ball. Like, I yeah. know we have running backs. It's I'm just sem- throwing the ball. And it's not a crazy thing, right? Because he threw last year for 5,316 yards, which is the third highest total in NFL history. So it's not like he's that far off. He just has to do a little better than what he did last year. So and do you know who the head coach is now? Um, it's Todd Bowles. They replaced, yeah, it's Bulls. They replaced Arians, right? The yeah. biggest pushover of a coach ever. I remember watching him on the Jets. I think they're not – They're. we often misunderstand these greats um incentives or motivations same with lebron 
I, I don't think it actually, this is Shaq's words, not mine. I don't think he's trying to win a championship. I think he's trying to play with Bronny and set his single season records or set his career records to kind of create distance in the history mm-hmm. books. In my humble opinion, I think that's what Brady's doing. I think he wants separation in those career totals. So I agree. I would bet on individual stats over Buccaneer team success this year. So there is, do you know who holds the record? It's Peyton Manning's record. And that's his rival. And, you know, it's not that it's so out of reach. I think he was only like 165 yards shy, 164 yards shy last year. Like it's 54-77. That's a lot, but it's not completely unreachable. Um, and- Brady has 84,000 yards in his career. Breeze has 80. Manning has 72. Favre has 72. Yeah, Brady played many more years. But the single season record that we're talking about is – Single season Manning's 5,477 yards. That's what I'm saying he's going to bring. He's going to throw for basically 5,500 yards or more and break Manning's okay. record. You have the NFC West. This is an interesting one, man. It, you know, I can make an argument. You know, I, I sometimes try to do like, uh, let's go two different ways with this, right? I could make an argument on this that um, Trey Lance is going to be fantastic. That Trey Lance is going to be what everybody you know thinks he's going to be, and that the the 49ers win this division, the Rams take a step back. Um, what I will tell you is just like um, the North, this is a two playoff team division, and the other two teams are terrible. The Seahawks at six and eleven, the Cardinals at six and eleven. Did I give the records that I think I was trying to give everybody's records um, in the Tampa Bay division here? Buccaneers ten and seven, Saints nine and eight, Panthers seven and ten, Falcons four and thirteen. In addition to Brady, before I get into the the other division, I do want to talk. I think Jameis Winston has a good year. Just pass it. I think he's going to have his picks. He throws his picks, but I think he's going to be throwing the ball all over the place. He's got Michael Thomas coming back. I think Winston's going to turn some heads, and he's going to approach a five thousand yard passing season. Chips on shoulder. Really so another one. I am banking on Christian McCaffrey staying healthy this season. It hasn't happened, right? You know, the, you know the, the, the history would tell you that it's not going to happen. He hasn't been able to do it. But I think he's 1,000, 1,000. I think he has 1,000 yards rushing, 1,000 yards receiving this year. I think he stays healthy. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think Baker Mayfield may right. be the best quarterback he's had throwing him the ball. I agree. And But, Cage, why, why don't you think the Panthers are even going to finish second, let alone first? I, I think the Saints have a better team. I think the Panthers – it's it's you think the Saints um, have a better team, huh? I is do. it Kamara and Thomas? I do Kamara and Thomas are huge weapons. Like they're gonna make Jameis Winston look so much better. And their defense is very opportunistic. The Panthers, okay. the pa- it's Baker Mayfield. Like like yeah. Yeah. You'd rather Jameis to Baker? Uh yes. But it's less that. I would rather um McCaffrey's great. Kamara's not that much worse. Michael Thomas is fantastic. Okay. You know what I mean? Michael Thomas is just, he's that good. Um, okay. And I don't think the Panthers have anybody even on that level like to even talk about. Um, but, I mean, it, it's 7 and 10 versus 9 and 8. That could just as easily be two teams at 8 and 9. You know, I'm yeah. not saying that it's such a huge disparity between them. I don't think either of them make the playoffs. I don't think either of them are as good as the Bucs. Um, and that's mostly because I think in the NFC, you're talking about Packers. And Vikings, you're talking about Eagles, Cowboys, and then you're talking about um, in the other division, you're talking about um, why is it slipping my brain? We just talked about the Rams and the Niners. So one of these divisions can't have two playoff teams, and this okay. is the one. Um, Rams. I am a little concerned about Matthew Stafford's arm. He threw the ball like 7,000 times last season, right? He was throwing it all over the place. He played every playoff game. He was throwing it all over. He played in the Super Bowl. And he came out and has, like, elbow issues this year. And and while, yeah, they don't know what it is. They're resting. There was talk with McVay about whether or not he's on a pitch count on Thursday, which it can't be because he's playing against the Bills. You know, this might be a fucking 65 to 62 game. Um, so it happens a lot. It used to happen with running backs. Somebody who had, you know, m- m- enough touches the year before, the person who led the league in touches would usually fall apart the following season. Well, I don't think anyone threw the ball last year more attempts than Stafford. You could check that. Um, just, and I'm talking about extended season. 
Yep. You know what I mean? Because he played more games than anyone because he, he played in the Super Bowl. Um, I know he had more attempts than, you know, Burrow had. But so, so you know, he's got some arm issues. That's difficult. Difficult to go into a year, you know, even re- as returning Super Bowl champs. And then they start the season off. He could have a bad arm and they could be down 0-1 real quick with a game here against the Bills. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. Um, I will tell you, I'm not sold on Trey Lance, right? The 49ers. No one is. No one's seen him play. Everybody's sold on him. You see the prices his cards are selling for. I mean, Trey Lance could be Patrick Mahomes. And Trey Lance could be Gardner Minshew, who I happen to like, you know. But, you know, I mean, he could be Justin Fields. He could be – who the heck knows who Trey Lance is? But – People are really, really uh, counting on um, Trey Lance turning in a, a major performance. And all I have to say about that, if you're holding his cards, he may be great. But his own team, his own team is saying that they don't really fully trust him because they resigned no, Jimmy G. They resigned no, Jimmy G. 100%. That's a good business decision. I disagree. I say this all the time. If you have one, you have none. If you have two, you have a few. That's you silly. Always- if You don't need two starting quarterbacks. Okay? You don't what need do you two starting that of course guy, you do. They should, if Lance is their guy, they should move Garoppolo and get him a weapon. If what they if, are, what if super, Lance gets hurt? Then they're not trusting Lance. But how is that? That's not I'm his saying goal. for Lance. Okay, what if Lance gets hurt? the The premise we have here is you're you got an echo, so you did something. The premise we have here is be nervous if you're a Lance holder. Your argument is what if Lance gets hurt? No, my I, you're you're conflating arguments. My argument this is what I do. This is Lance what I do. Cards. My argument was about why Kyle Shanahan and Lynch would sign Garoppolo as an insurance policy. You don't sign him. You move yeah. him and you get the guy a weapon and you go all in. Tell me, tell me who else has a Jimmy Garoppolo level backup in the NFL? Because you Jimmy have himself. you have the rule. You have the rule. The rule is. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Great argument. You're very helpful in arguing for yourself. If you don't have one, you need two. You don't have two, you need four. They got to have Garoppolo because you need a second one. Garoppolo sucks. But very, very nicely sucks, done. But he knows that offense. So Jimmy, instead of getting somebody off the street that's as good as Garoppolo, who's not very good, and teach him the, the playbook, you have Garoppolo who knows the playbook and is mediocre. You move Garoppolo to a team that is willing to give you an asset that you can actually use. You know, a wide receiver on the other side, an offensive lineman who's going to protect your quarterback, a defensive player that can make the, make a difference for you. Okay. Well, they, you know, they, have a good, they have a lot of playmakers. They, they, have they, a- they do. They 100% do. But if I'm a Trey Lance holder, it doesn't make me feel better at night that the reason why they held Debo, on to Jimmy Garoppolo is because Trey Kittle, Lance might get hurt. <laughs> Debo, Kittle, a- Ayuk. Listen, we've Ayuk talked about Ayuk. Lance. Ayuk. Who cares about Ayuk? Debo is – Debo is amazing. Kittle is fantastic. And he has a great quarterback coach. I mean, you know, everybody, including Jimmy Garoppolo, looks good um, in that Niners system. Uh, We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with him. Uh, He gets the benefit of, I mean, the Rams defense is awesome. Seahawks are dysfunctional. The Cardinals, I may have to pump the brakes. We talked about Kyler Murray. I did not remember that DeAndre Hopkins suspension actually extends six games into this year. Into this year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that's not, you know, that's not the greatest thing in the world for, um, Was you know, he also on worm cream? Like Tatis, were they training together? I don't know, man. I mean, he, he, he's just been, it, when he's not on the field, they don't play. That's a, that's a playoff team last year, right? I mean, the Cardinals made the playoffs, but I think they started eight and oh, I mean, they're missing a you quarterback. They're missing. How yeah. distant that was? Yep. Maybe even nine? I don't remember. But I, I know they, they started eight. No. Okay. Cage. I mean, they also have a very difficult schedule if you're a Cardinals play. I mean, he may put up good numbers because of it, but not only do they start the season off uh, first six without um, DeAndre Hopkins, but they start the season off Chiefs, Raiders, Rams. So, I mean, the Raiders is, I guess, a winnable game, but that's the only one I think that's winnable of those three. That's three playoff teams. That's three very Kids, good the teams. The Raiders might be a top 10 complete team in the league. We talked about it. The Raiders could win their division or they could finish fourth in their division. That division is insane. It's very hard to predict. NFC playoffs. That gives us the Packers with the one seed, the Rams, the Eagles, the Buccaneers, the Cowboys, the Vikings, and the Niners. Believe it or not, 
if that sets up that way, remember, these are some hot takes, some bold predictions. I, I did this on purpose. If that sets up that way, it sets up a repeat, a revenge game, some might say. Some might get that banana hat on. And all of you Trey Lance lovers, I'm talking to you, Backyard Breaks. What's the dude's name? Grant that loves Trey Lance? I'm talking he to you, looks, all the Trey looks. Lance. You will love it if this happens. I have the Niners actually beating the Rams in the wild card matchup. It's a close game, but you know, last year they had a close game and the Rams came out on top. I got the Niners taking out the Rams. I got the Vikings taking out the Eagles. And I got the, the Bucks over the Cowboys, a, a replay, I think, of week one here. Um, I got the Packers beating the Niners. I got the Bucks over the Vikings, and I got an NFC championship game of old dog versus old dog. I got mm-hmm. Rodgers and Brady in the NFC championship game. And Rodgers so sword. Think about my my insanity there, man, that I have an AFC championship of Mahomes and Wilson and, Wilson and Rodgers playing against Brady. And it's not insane to think about that, but if that happens, Herbert, Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Josh Allen, all these guys that people are Dust, investing their money Dust in. in the wind. Josh Rosen. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Baker Mayfield. Sam Darnold. None of them that you all heavily invest would, in. Mitch Kupchak. Jerry <laughs> West. Lou Cinder. What are we doing here? Are we just Mitch, naming? Mitch Kumstein? What'd you say? <laughs> Kupchak. Oh, That's a good okay. GM. So anyway, those are my my fun little, you know, ridiculous plays there. We'll see what happens. This is a great year. We, we did the NFL show last year, and we took a parody in the league. You can see it again. Like, you know, we're, we're predicting teams to go 10 and 7, 11 and 6, you know, 9 and 8. It, it, that's a bounce of a ball here and there. Um, I'm excited for the season to start. And talk about a great game to start it off with, right? I mean, the, the Rams and the Bills. Somebody starts 0 1. A Super Bowl favorite starts 0 1. Hangover. Hangover, you always get a Super Bowl hangover. Any breakout stars, any breakout players you have the doobies? I mean, other than doobs, other than Mr. Doobs, doobs, doobies. Olave is going to be very, very good. Chris Olave is going to be very, very good. Um, uh, who's the big boy the Eagles got that could just like steamroll people on defense? I don't know the Georgia defensive end. You know, that if it's not if it's not Sauce Gardner, it doesn't make a difference to me. It doesn't matter. Sauce is a G. Sauce, sauce, sauce. No, Olave is my 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 Jordan here. Davis. That's that's for the Saints. That's another weapon for uh, for Mister Jameis to be throwing the ball to, opposite of Michael Thomas, learning how to play wide receiver the right way. Another potential thousand yard wide receiving rookie, Chris you Olave. Love Michael Ohio Thomas. State. I do. Dude, he's a great route runner. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do. And listen, McCaffrey, uh, guys, I'll make a prediction. I started buying McCaffrey cards. I want to make sure we're as transparent and honest as we can. I bought two McCaffrey cards in a, a weekly PWCC two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was. I bought uh, you know, one of his National Treasures RPAs. I think I bought a Flawless. Um, you know, Some nice cards. And I'm amazed at how cheap they are by comparison to some of the guys we talked about who haven't even, <laughs> haven't even played in the NFL sure. yet. So... Um, Yes, part of my analysis of McCaffrey's thousand thousand is wishful thinking. Breakout but season, man. I'm honest though, right? I mean, I, I'm a Raider fan. I have them finishing last in the division. That's because so. you like to make your expectations really low. So anything that happens, no, it's because you're... I'm a Raider fan, and they shouldn't have. They were very lucky last year. I don't remember exactly what it was. The last, it was like they won like six of their last seven games. Like they went on this crazy streak where they didn't win any by more than a score. And their over the total was like negative yep. sixteen, like they just squeaked in, right? You know, um, and we were talking about how they could tie the Chargers, and they both got in. And you remember that ridiculousness? Did. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just I'm not a believer in that team, just because that division is just it's so hard to predict. It it just really is. Um, Brees Hall is somebody that a lot of folks. We talked about the Jets, and you were like Michael Carter. Brees Hall is a running back for the Jets, and people are talking about him as a potential, you know, um, you know, um, rookie of the year candidate. Olave, Drake, London. A lot of people I saw have uh, George Pickens. I mean, these are you know wide receivers. Um, you know, they have a, a bunch of a bunch of different wide receivers that they have, you know, succeeding. It's a throwing league, so. Um, 
Pickens on the Steelers. So I love it. What do you got? What do you I am preparing for NBA season, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> all right. Well, you prepare now and we're all good. But that's our second half of our NFL, you know, predictions. Um, I want to look at something because we're gonna do this. Can we pull up some props for tomorrow night? Sure. Um, let's see, some NFL props for Rams uh, against the Bills because you know what I'm going to – you know, uh, Prop king. Prop, literally the prop king. I mean, I love these props. They kind of like jump out at me, but I'm not talking about like silly like, um, you know, coin flip, right? But I got to tell you, man, I think that the beginning of the season – we were great in the end of the season on props because you got to see what teams were doing. Beginning of the season is a great way for betting props because Vegas has not caught up with what teams are doing differently and is still doing their lines based on what last year was. I love Josh Allen's ability to scramble and run. And in the postseason, he was doing a lot of that. Remember, we were, we were hitting it every week. End of the year, when all the games right. matter, Josh Allen's going to run. He's going to have more, more than 19 yards, more than 40 yards, more than whatever the hell it was. You know, his playoffs were every time was over, 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 right? Well, I have a feeling that the Bills coaching staff this year is going to want to keep him upright, want to keep him healthy, and at least in the beginning of the season to start to get some wins, to start to you know, maybe go for some home field advantage, you know, keep him healthy. They're going to want him in the pocket more. He'll scramble when he needs to, right? I mean, they're not going to want to take his legs away from him because that's a huge part of his game. But I think they're going to be looking for him to actually evolve as a thrower. And believe it or not, the over-under, you may on some sites have to lay some odds on this, but the over-under at Caesars is straight. Passing touchdowns for Allen is one and a half. One and a half passing touchdowns for him. I would slam that over. I think he has three. Right? I know the Rams have a good defense, but defenses don't come out firing on all cylinders You know, in the beginning of the season. They're still working things yeah. out. Um, I think this is going to be a shootout. Right? I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. And a lot of people don't like laying odds, but I, I urge people that l- don't like that to just look up implied probability. Yeah. Like the odds are like minus 170. So it's like maybe 60% chance. I think it's like right around there that that happens. I would lay the odds on that one a hundred percent. And yeah. the same thing, just, you know, it's almost like stacking, right? I would, this is an even money bet. I think Stefan Diggs over five receptions is almost a lock. I think he's going to be targeted early and often. And, um, you know, that's the deal. I think, I think both of these offenses are great. Depending on what site you use, um, Cooper Cuff's receiving yards is in the high 80s. I think he goes over that. Um, this is one of the ones where I would lean towards offensive, um, you know, offensive-minded numbers here. I wouldn't be doing too many on the, on the unders, on the skill guys. But those are just some ones that I, uh, you know, that's what I look at. I think Allen to Diggs is going to happen a lot in this game, and I would wind up with there, right? Um, so I like it. Allen over one and a half touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Stefan Diggs over five and a half receptions. Yeah, I think it happens. And uh, and Cooper Cup receiving yards. I mean, depending on where I've seen as high as like 92, but I don't care. He's gonna go over 100 yards. Um, he's healthy. You know, he was doing that last season at the end when he had nagging injuries. He's gonna come in, you know, and and you know, they're gonna look to use him. And I think the way this game goes is a lot of scoring and they have to keep up with each other. And the way to do that is throwing. So I think you're going to see a lot of, a lot of good numbers um, for both of those guys. I would be a little scared on, you know, rushing yards on Allen. Wait, wait a couple weeks, (laughs) wait a few weeks. And when his, when his, when his rushing numbers are down because they're throwing and defenses are now trying to rush him, they'll, they'll scheme and the offense will say, all right, you know what? That's it. They're giving you the corner. Go ahead and take off. Go ahead and run. Go ahead, quarterback, scramble up the middle. Go ahead and do your thing. So that's 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 my way of doing the prop bets. So well, anyway, just want to throw a little fun one in there for you. You guys know I'm an NBA guy. I'm excited for season. I'm I'm we're gonna do a similar show, and I'm kind of have a list of prospects that I think will take the next step. This is an uh, Cage's bread and butter. You made this episode easy on me, man. A few jokes, some mushrooms, some funny words, some kissing cousins. And then Dude, we, we do this, see. right? Well, we hope to show up on Sunday for whatnot. Um, I hope that happens. We give you fun picks like I think the Jaguars actually upset the Commanders. I think the Chargers beat the holy hell out of my Raiders. I think they've been waiting a while to uncork it. 
I don't like Herbert, but I just don't think the Raiders are that good. Week two go against the Chargers because they're not going to be actually as good as they look against the Raiders. I think Baker Mayfield shows up and just puts a beating on his old team. Some previews of our Sunday episode. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So as a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month. And many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send 5, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC. And I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards so you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me. And I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a P.O. box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday and gives me a day to prep, and it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card, simple as that, and the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is. 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number, 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.